All right, so let's get into this thing. Um, Alec from the Line 6 Mini Bad Scientist Club. And we had a question in the group today about the lovely Morning Star and a video that they put out pre NAM, which was going through two little super cool concepts. Now, what this thing does is the Morning Star has 30 banks. When you turn it on, it comes up on bank one. So think of it as 30 times this. You've got your six screens, your six buttons, but then you've got combinations, like go up and down, hit that, bank two, bank three, up to 30. Pretty easy. And you can see mine, I'm filling up these banks, slowly but surely, with all kinds of different test beds, different things, and you can call them. And the way you do this, it's exactly what they were doing in that vid. You've got in and out here. So if you connected up a MIDI cable to MIDI out, or MIDI in, sorry, you can send signals in from another MIDI controller or Helix or an iPad or whatever. You can send in there and say, with a PC message, a program change, go to one, two, three, four, five, up to 30, and that will automatically switch these to a bank. Now, the same concept applies in the menus of this thing. There's a thing called set bank, which is basically jump to this bank from inside. So what I've done here is I've set this A and D combination to go always, back, always go back to bank one, which is your home bank. So when you power this up, that's where you are, home. You see in the video, they're doing all kinds of cool stuff where if they're changing externally the preset on the stomp, it's sending messages to the in, and for the first 30, you can actually change through those presets. If you're in a preset above that, it's not gonna work. So, there's some planning involved in this. You know, it's, it's a good caveat to mention, but this is, I think, the only controller of its type, of this size, of that price range, that does that. The um, RJMs, other stuff, they do this as well, but super kudos to Benjamin Chia and the boys because, you know, my boy out of there, Singapore. This thing is awesome. So, the menu structure. What I've done is, on the first one, I've set up these to jump to other banks. So up and down, jumps to a bank that controls Helix presets all the way from 1 to 127, or 0 to 127. The Sim one, which has 99, that's up and down. So I could sit here and control two pedals randomly, selecting stuff whilst I'm fiddling about, you know, testing stuff out. I've also got the tuner set up, which jumps to the Helix, and this Snapshot one and FS4, FS5, and this to switch modes visibly on the Helix stomp. But you can set anything you want. So back to home base. And you go, off you go. You can move these around. Some of them are already taken. If you were to stick in the EXP 1 and 2, you can use this for an expression pedal, but you can also use this for a up to a three button remote or a two button remote like the TT ones for a mission. And those become extra pedals. If you've got the MC8, you've already got two extra and a big massive screen and it's really cool. So check that out for the buck. If you're getting into this and you have the space on your board, the MC8 trumps this thing by miles, but anyway. On song, that doesn't work. I've still got some stuff to fix in this, but you can do all kinds of stuff. So what they were doing in this menu where you had list A, list B, you're hitting that and it's going set bank to another of these banks. And that bank had six different presets set up in it, six different PC messages, and would jump to them. When it would jump to them, you have another set bank which is jumping to a specific bank here for that preset. Same thing that you were seeing when they were switching on the helix by the moving the, the rotor. Those are preset banks specifically for that preset. And you can reuse them and reuse them and reuse them. So, you know, if you have an acoustic bank, for me, I'm setting this so I've got slots one to 20 or one to 25 or something like that in the Helix, which only work with acoustics. And using a PC scroll, 
this thing will spin through and will stay only in acoustics. And on the Sim 1, it stays only in the acoustics, which is really cool. This pauses it, um, what is it doing? Puts it in bypass, you can turn it on and turn it off. Cool stuff. You can control multiple, multiple, multiple pedals with this. So if you had an Iridium, you could bank that. If you had, you know, whatever you want. The delay pedals, you can do all this stuff right from here, which is really cool. So that's basically the concept of what they're doing. And when you're planning this out, what you want to think of when you have a morning star, don't think of this as a six button screen remote. This is literally 12 different buttons, six physical ones, but then they're mapped, the external ones, like these combinations A and D, you can map them externally and do amazing stuff. So that's how that super demo of theirs is working. You're basically just creating, you think of a website, if you're building that, they're, they're hyperlinks, essentially which jump you all over the place. And you've got to arrange your presets to work with it. Draw a map on paper, you know, take 30 sheets of paper and draw them out, link them together. It's really cool, it's really simple because they have probably one of the best, best editors out there. You can simply connect an iPad to it, jump in there, plug it into the USB, and program this stuff on the uh, from anywhere. If you look at this thing, I've got that plugged into a battery, so this whole thing is running right now off battery power. You can run it off 9 volt, you can run it off both, there's a electrical resistor do flicky thing here which lets you do it, but it's not really recommended, but it can be done. But if you have questions on this, you've got Danny um, and Benjamin who are the boys. They can hook you up with different things. Our group, the Mini Mad Scientist Club, pushes this because it's so cool. And you can run this in combination with all kinds of other little controllers. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. So, super kudos to Benjamin and the team out in Singapore who make this thing. It has revolutionized my boards and two thumbs up, man. Highly recommended. Get into the, the manuals, you know, read them. It's, it's really worth going through and the, the stuff you can do is just incredible. So I've got one for basic looping, I've got ones for quantum loop, for loop HD, whack on that. And you've got with quantum loop up to a four track recorder with multiple overdubs and all kinds of stuff. It's just wow, you can stop, you can go to presets. Really cool back to home base. So I hope that gives you some real insights as to what this thing can do. PC command. Program changes in. We'll switch this automatically. Now, a couple of caveats for you. If you are connecting this up and you've got your Helix on one and this on one, channel one, this will respond to PC changes coming out. You can change that. There's such a thing, if you hit A and F, you've got MIDI through. What this does is it copies whatever's coming in on the in and sends it back on the out, and also out the USB. So, extra things you can do. If you have a keyboard or something that uses MIDI over USB, turning on MIDI through, you can route MIDI signals in here and then back out over USB into a keyboard or a sim one or anything that's using USB. Super versatile. Be very careful doing this though. You can turn it on and off. It's kind of like a gate where it says, okay, signals pass or signals don't pass. If you're in a situation where you start seeing things going crazy on your Helix or whatever other thing you're using, it's probably because you've got this set to through and what's coming in is going out and that causes what is known as a MIDI loop in which, you know, it's coming in saying, okay, send to one. It sends back out another command saying, send to one. And it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Be aware of that. This is basic stuff for MIDI. Normally, you'd want to leave it off if you're doing this. You can use a Quico or better yet, there's this new CME device coming out, which is the same as this. 
but it will allow this thing to be what's it called master slave or host host and client whatever you want to call it and this will allow you to go direct to a helix without passing through a PC or a tablet or anything like that it will revolutionize the entire game not something I say all the time but game changing so very cool stuff really hope this is good for you Corey and for anyone else in the Midi Mad Scientist Club who's looking at this stuff if you want help with this holler and I'll be more than happy to help you out or contact Danny or Benjamin or the boys over there at Morningstar they make amazing stuff really amazing stuff so have a good day y'all and I'm gonna get back into programming this thing and seeing what's up back to home good luck